One of the hottest seats in F1 currently belongs to Lance Stroll. And while many fans and experts feel like he's safe due to the fact that his father owns the team, Lawrence Stroll has just revealed massive news about Lance's future. Even though the young Canadian showed some flashes that he could be a great driver, his latest rant in Qatar and the crash in Singapore may be enough for his father to do what he never hoped to, have a serious conversation with his son about his future in the sport. This time, however, it's not going to be good news for Lance, and the question has finally come to Lawrence's ears. Should he really keep his son on the team, or is it time for another driver after massive moves were made by Aston Martin regarding their sponsorships and engine suppliers? Aston Martin has been one of the brightest points in 2023, at least in the first half of it, because nobody really expected them to fight for podiums after having such a disastrous season in 2022. However, the £200 million investment that Lawrence Stroll led in Silverstone, combined with the technical staff that the team hired from Red Bull, turned out to be the real deal in turning the ship around. But there's one thing that keeps bugging Stroll's mind, and that's the performance of his own son. It goes without saying saying that one of the biggest disappointments in Formula 1 is Lance Stroll. He's currently placed 10th on the grid and is only a small margin ahead of the Alpine duo. And on top of that, he's losing the battle with the rookie Oscar Piastri. This wouldn't have hurt as much as it does if Alonso was in the same bracket as Lance, but the two-time world champion is currently fourth in the Drivers' Championship, having seven podiums and a 136-point difference compared to his teammate. The performance stats don't lie as well. Alonso has been able to outperform Stroll 15 times, while the Canadian was better on two occasions only, with one of them being Barcelona, where Alonso has told the team he won't attack Lance because he thinks of the great good of the team. Had he chosen not to do this, then the only win Stroll would have had over Alonso would be in Austria's sprint race, where he finished fourth and Alonso was right behind in fifth. All in all, it's been a very disappointing season for Stroll, but this has been the case in 2022 as well. So why raise the question of his foreseeable future at Aston Martin now? David Croft from Sky F1 has elaborated on this matter and when talking about Lance's future, he went on to say, I want to see the Lance Stroll that turned up in Bahrain because I think he's lost his way a little bit. I think he's lost his mojo and whatever's happened, Lance just doesn't seem to be as motivated now as he was at the start of the season. We've never looked at his future elsewhere, but I just have a little feeling that in about a year and a half's time, Lance Stroll will race his last race in Formula One and go off and do something else, because I just think he's losing his mojo. I don't think Formula One was the sport he wanted to go when he was younger. I mean, he was a massive tennis talent when he was younger, one of the best youngsters in Canada at the time. And I just wonder if he might go off and find something that fulfills him more and brings more excitement to him. There are two pillars that are currently threatened to be destroyed in Stroll's case, and the first one is his commitment to the sport. After the Qatar GP, Stroll threw the steering wheel away from the car and pushed his trainer on the side while barely giving any words to the media. I know that the team has elaborated on his lack of communication and shyness, but that doesn't really seem to be the case, as we've always heard what he's capable of saying through the radio. Furthermore, there are rumours that Stroll might not have always wanted to be an F1 driver and while the Canadian driver did laugh off all of these claims after the Singapore GP, his mother has been allegedly trying to pursue him out of an F1 seat due to concerns about his health. It all goes back to his childhood days and the reason why we're elaborating on this matter is for you to understand that driving F1 cars has not always been on Stroll's wish list and DNA like it is for Verstappen, Leclerc or any other F1 driver out there. Jacques Villeneuve, who was a 1997 world champion and was a longtime neighbour of the Stroll family back in Montreal, says that even though his family bought a helicopter for Lance to go to the karting track in his young days, despite the track being a rough 15 minutes walk away from his house, it still did not wake up the interest in the Canadian driver for the sport. A separate source from Jacques also elaborated on Stroll's attitude to racing as his father and son went to visit the factory, to which he said, Father and son once came to our factory to have a look. I have never seen such an interested father and such a disinterested son. 
Now, this is all, of course, history now, and we don't want to bore you further with it. We want to talk about the future of Stroll and how it might turn out for the young Canadian driver, especially because sources close to Aston Martin no longer rule out a retirement for their youngest driver. Apart from Sargent, Stroll is the only driver who is not confirmed for 2024 just yet, and after his father received a hefty offer for the leadership rights of Aston Martin from Aramco, one of F1 and the Silverstone-based team's primary sponsors, he might want to think twice before continuing the F1 voyage that, while it seemed promising in the beginning, is slowly but surely turning into a huge question mark after his best performer is a 41-year-old two-time world champion and the future of the team is left in his son's hands. The current picture of Aston Martin doesn't look great at all. There's no question about Alonso's dedication and his willingness to put the car in extreme conditions to extract the maximum out of it, but his days are more or less numbered in the sport. And even if he wants to race beyond the 45th year of his life, that's not a guarantee that he'll be able to fight for championships. The team has no future with the second younger driver, and that might have been one of the key factors that the investors are going to be repelled by. Imagine you want to buy a stake in Aston Martin or invest your money in their future development and see the vast difference in points between Alonso and Stroll on the table. And to top that off, you see that the second driver is actually the son of the owner of the team. So whatever he does, he's under a glass bell and is protected under any circumstances. This has been something that Lawrence Stroll is currently going through in his head. And although he did reject the $800 million offer from Aramco to buy out the team, he did not want to confirm that Aston Martin is not going to be sold in the foreseeable future. Elaborating on this, Lawrence said, that is not planned in the moment selling the team. However, we have been approached. Formula One is a sport and a business that burns. After all, we must not forget that Aston Martin is a team that is mostly focused on manufacturing road cars and their F1 branch is supposed to bring them massive profits so that they will be able to survive. And not only did they fail to do this, but their losses have been quite significant. Despite the huge influx of money from sponsorship and prizes, Aston Martin recorded significant losses last year, and if they want to survive their primary goal, they might have to pull their hands out of F1 or cut down funding, which would inevitably mean that Alonso and Stroll would lose even more of the potential they've started to lose in the beginning of the season. From a team that was fighting in the top three to a team that will inevitably end P5 if a miracle doesn't happen with Stroll or McLaren decides to stop finishing second and third, the story of Aston Martin is definitely rubbing on Stroll's future in the sport. And if he's to leave the team, then I guess there's no other racing company that would rather take him on knowing what he's capable of. Lance Stroll, however, might not be done with racing, and while F1 seems like too big of a bite for him to chew, we must not forget that Aston Martin has opened teams in different racing categories, such as the World Endurance Championship, as well as Le Mans 24. To put things in perspective, Antonio Giovinazzi, a former Italian F1 driver, has managed to find his home in Le Mans 24, winning the legendary race for Ferrari for the first time in years. It's not that Stroll isn't a good racer, it's just the fact that the circuit circumstances under which he performs are quite questionable and are very much in his comfort zone, which are the two ingredients you definitely don't need in order to grow as a driver. Whether Stroll will remain in the sport or be replaced now that Aston Martin signed the contract with Honda, time will tell, but the next year will be crucial for the future of Lance because his team is no longer in the top three, and if he can't pick up the pace, I'm afraid that with the recent slump in performance, Aston Martin will be back where they were in 2020. What do you think about Lance Stroll's future in Formula One? Give us your thoughts. Let us know in the comments below.